Hi guys, this is Kim, aka Spartan Stitcher on Instagram. It is floss tube number 44 and the 25th of November 2019. It is Thanksgiving week. Um, my kids only have three days of school this week. I know there are some other school districts in the country that don't have school at all. Um, but I hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving and we got some snow last week and then it melted and then last night we got some freezing rain and more snow which is melting again and this week they're saying a winter storm is coming but they can't predict how much snow is coming <laughs> so it's, it's the weather guessers as my husband calls them because hardly in any other job could you be wrong so frequently and still keep your job right like aircraft maintenance we we can't be wrong at our job that often because then people could die anyways that's the weather i had a good week of stitching so let's talk i have a finish and some good progress so last week in the school of magical stitches and literature God, i don't even remember what the homework was oh it was 500 stitches that's what it was 500 stitches on a whip and there was four different tasks and then vicky spun a wheel and he had to work 500 stitches on that whip well the whip that was chosen for me was friendship compass which i was hoping to finish and i did i did let's see 220 stitches to finish all the stitching on it and then 516 beads so you know that's over 700 stitches I was so close after doing the 500 for homework I just kept going I got it all done uh, I think I worked on it two days to get it done now I showed you the beads I was going to use last week and I ended up changing three out of the four colors just because I wasn't happy with them once I got them on the pack. I knew as soon as I was recording the video that I wasn't happy with the purple. So I found some uh, purple ones at Hobby Lobby. Mayuki Delicas, I think they were. Um, and then I luckily had a different green and a different cream in my bead stash that I also subbed in. So the only one that... <coughs> You saw last week that stayed the same was the pink so here you go there's the finished piece if you go to my Instagram I took a picture of this on the quilt where I chose the colors to match um, so I will be either framing this or mounting it on something to hang in my guest room we'll get a close-up Okay, so you can see all the beads. So the purple ones are petite seed beads compared to all the other ones are just regular seed beads, which I didn't really mind because um, if you could see the quilt, the purple is the smallest color or least used color. So I'm glad that the purple didn't stick out more in this green border. So there you go. There's a finish on that one. I started this, I think, back in February for something, of course, with magical stitches. Really happy with how it came out. It was a fun stitch, and um, I'm definitely going to hold on to that pattern that because I might want to stitch it again um, in a different colorway sometime in the future. So that's Friendship Compass by Glenn in Place. Again, it's a freebie in the Glenn in Place Stitchers Facebook group which I always have linked in the description box for every video that that piece shows up. And then Thursday, so I finished, I worked on that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I guess. And then Thursday, I didn't know what to work on because I knew Friday, Saturday, Sunday was going to be full coverage. So I decided to start on the, um, white poinsettia table runner that I'm trying to finish for my mother-in-law. I showed this to you last week where all the white is done. All that's left is the gold metallic. Now, I read the directions. The directions say, you know, it, it lists the number of strands. The cross stitch was supposed to be in three strands of white. Satin stitch, three strands of white. 
and then three strands of metallic for the uh, the little berries. Backstitch was supposed to be two strands of each, depending on you know what spot and what color. Straight 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 stitch two strands of each, and French knot three strands for the white. Okay, that's what the directions say. But that's not what my grandmother-in-law actually did. She stitched with two strands instead of three. She did the set white satin berries with two strands. Her French knots look like they're two strands. And then after I, I started the metallic on the, on the big flower in two strands, because that's what it was saying. And I'm like, this is bananas. This is crazy. It's not fun. I was getting all sorts of tangles on the back, which I'll actually show you because <clears throat> it's two, two strands of metallic. It's a mess. And then if you didn't catch it right enough, soon enough, it was even more of a mess. You can see my, you know, grandmother did a wonderful job on her back. Um... So then I look closer at the big motif that she had finished the gold and I was doing this today because I know I have to get working on this. There are three of the gold fronds where she used two strands. The berries in that motif and the rest, the majority of the fronds are done with one strand of metallic. And you know what? It looks, yes, it's more delicate. It doesn't pop as much but it covers the permanent stamped ink better. And it looks neater. So yeah, I'm gonna do the rest in one strand. Now, I'm not gonna touch her big motif for the three, three little fronds that she did in, in two strands just yet. I'm gonna fix the ones that I did. I'll be probably just frogging you know using my scissors on that metallic and trashing it I'm not going to try to save metallic that's already been used once it's going to fray and make a mess um, so <clears throat> all right she had started one of these I finished the frond I did all the other fronds and I did the berries in the middle and so this is the one I was working on today and I'm like forget this this is this is crazy so here's where I am right now. You can see this is one strand versus the other are two strands. Yes, the two strands stick out more, but they're also not very neat. The strands are splitting. You can, they're not staying tight. So you can see the printing underneath. I don't like it. So I'm going to continue with one strand. I'll redo all that double strand. I'll do these six little motifs in single strand. I'll get you to focus in one strand. I'll do those six in one strand. I'll fix mine. But, you know, she finished this one. And my mother in law is of the type that doesn't mind mistakes, doesn't mind inconsistencies. I stitched a, a big ink, ink circles piece for her before where there was dye lot issues and I was off a stitch or two on two motifs that were supposed to be mirrored and she loved it. She likes seeing, you know, <clears throat> the story of the piece, if you will, that I've talked about before. So I'm not going to touch this one that her mom did. It's only... Three little, three little fronds that are, are uh, double strand. So I'm not going to touch that one. I'm going to continue my single strand on the others. And I'll keep showing this to you in the videos so you can see how it grows. Again, my mother-in-law will be here for Christmas. So i got to get that done. I'll work on that in between other pieces or maybe do a few strands a day. Um just to whittle away at that because it is metallic and no one wants to um, burn out on metallic or get too frustrated that you don't want to pick the piece up again. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday was Big Strides Weekend in Full Coverage Fanatics. My biggest 
full coverage piece is super size museum shelf color or er, super size color expansion museum shelf is how I would say it. And I'm down here in the dinosaur block. I'll focus closer. So I have the partial page done here and I'm coming up to the, you know, the back part of the triceratops skull. And I didn't get as many stitches as I wanted I, um, over the weekend. I got over 1100 plus for today, for this week's homework. Um, I put in over 200 already. I'll talk about that homework later. So in total, since you saw this, I put in 1410 stitches. Um, even though it's color expansion, I still like to do my, my, uh, cross country per color, cross, cross country by color per page. There you go. So there's 1400 stitches. All right, here's your triceratops skull. I want you to imagine with me and, and visualize. This is not really the eyeball, but the eye hole in the skull. And this part right here is the shading underneath where the horns will be. And this back swoop right here, this will be the back part of his skull. Here's a book, like the shaded uh, area between two books. And coming up here is going to be the, the hind leg of another uh, dinosaur skeleton. And because I'm, I'm cropping out that outer gold border, this is the page. It's, it's narrower than normal. So it's a smaller page than normal, but there we go. It's coming. It's the dinosaurs are coming to life. So really happy working with that. Um, I'm going to be using this piece a lot next year in full coverage genetics around the world. Um, Bunkley themes because it fits so nicely. So you'll see more of that one next year. <clears throat> I don't know if I'll work on it anymore this year. I'd like to, but we all know we can't stitch on everything we want. We don't have enough time. And then the other piece I worked on this week, of course, was my 90-day uh, piece in Full Coverage Fanatics, Trick or Treat by Randall Spangler, Extreme Cross Country, doing all the black first. And I am in a sea of black for the evergreens over here and what will be the tree trunk. You can see. So I've finished, I've almost finished the porch railing. You can see there, there's a little bit of porch railing there above my finger and another black cat. I haven't done that part yet on the page that I'm on, but I'm bringing up this evergreen And I didn't write down how many stitches I've done. I have finished the, uh, by the numbers, 2400 in full coverage fanatics. And for by the numbers 1200, I was going to work on um, Friends Forever by Ann Stokes. And I only have like 600 done so far. It's not going to happen. It's the last week. I'm not going to get it all done. So I'm still counting those 600 stitches on Friends Forever for Things with Wings. But I am going to use Trick or Treat for both by the numbers. I think I'm at 5,600 stitches for the month so far. And I need to make it to 72. 7,200 um, 10 stitches for both by the numbers. So I've got one done. And it won't be hard to reach the other one. Because, again, it's all black. It goes quickly compared to Friends Forever, which was confetti. So, there you go. Here's your page so far. So here's your evergreen. Coming up, there's a lot, a lot of black in there. And then your porch railing will come over and that black cat will be right here. I think only the legs of the black cat are in the current page. You can see there's my, my uh, page line. So, but hopefully by next week when I show this to you, I'll have a row finish. And I'll have started on the next row of pages. So let's see if I can get the whole piece. There's the whole piece. Hopefully it's in focus. 
Um, I still haven't gone less than, than 30,000 stitches left, so still working on it. And we got one a week and a month left of progress on that one to come. So we'll see how far I get into the next row in December. All right, plans. This week in the School of Magical Stitches, we have a really easy week because we knew a lot of people would be traveling and we just wanted it to make, make it easy so that people could still participate and earn points if they only brought like one whip with them or if they're just so busy with family at their own house, maybe they're not traveling, but they can only do stitches on one whip, you have that option. So it's about wearing horcruxes. In the book, Harry, Ron, and Hermione took turns wearing the locket horcrux because it affected them uh, emotionally, mentally. So the idea is to, you can either one, work on one whip and do at least 300 stitches, and then you can continue doing increments of 100 stitches um, for one point each for as much as you want. Or if you have, you know, the time and you're at home and you can work on three different whips, you can do at least 100 of stitches each on three whips and then pick one of them and just keep going. So it's kind of like a pop-up event that we have, but all week. Um, so you have to at, at least do 300 stitches um, on one project or three projects, split across three, and then you can keep going. If you finish something, like if you do your 300 and then you keep going on one of the three and you finish it, then you can go to one of the other two of that three and keep working on that. So this is a massive opportunity for those who aren't doing much this week to earn a lot of points for their house or to just take it easy. So my three, um, I told you I already worked on museum shelf today. That was 210 stitches or, you know, 100 stitches for that one. And other pieces I need slash want to work on. Hogwarts travel poster is getting close to a finish. Wouldn't that be cool if I can get a, a, a second November finish in? I don't know how many are left, but let's take a look. So I'll definitely, this is 10 stitch, remember, around 28 count. So I'll definitely get my 200 tent in for the 100 stitches required and then keep going. It can't take me that long to, to do this little bit and then down the cliff to the little hut. That's all I got. So hopefully next week I'll show this to you. It'll be a finish. I'll have all the gritting off and you'll be able to see the whole thing. So I'm going to work on that. And then the other piece I should be working on this month that I haven't worked on yet. Big Red Ship of Life for my monthly rotation on it. I'm working on page four. I need to finish page four in December. So... Let me show you. Here's the, the whole width of the piece, the whole top row. So I'll definitely finish this top border and then borders will be done for a while. Except for, you know, the simple border that goes down the sides on each side. <clears throat> but I'll be happy not to, not to have to work on that top border for a while. So I'll finish this top border and then I'll start filling in this page down here. Let me fold it up so you can see closer. Focus. Again, this is 28 count MCG textiles, mushroom even weave, and using DMC 3808. Your color there is pretty accurate. We have an overcast but snowy day, so I got lots of light reflecting in. So there you go. I'll work on that. And then, of course, keep working on the poinsettia table runner. Let's see. I am now over a thousand subscribers. So I want to thank everybody again who subscribes and watches me regularly, likes, comments, um, and just, just watches my video. I really appreciate it. I am going to give away three charts. Um, so... First one everybody knows and loves, whether you 
think you can do it or not. Camelot Sampler by Teresa Wensler. Okay, so this was a leaflet. We have the inside that has all your floss key and instructions. And then I showed you before when I was working on this, the gigantic piece of paper, it's in a little protector. Um, this original is completely untouched. There's no marks on it. And it hasn't been opened and closed a lot, so you can still read all the symbols. And it's this big, double-sided. The only holes in it are from where it was stapled into the leaflet. Everything else is completely legible. So if you're a Teresa Wensler fan and you'd like Camelot, a hard copy, I don't know if you can get, you might be able to get Camelot, I shouldn't tell you this, on uh, Patterns Online. If you, if you want to, you know, go for this but you don't end up winning. I think it's available on Patterns Online. I'll look. Um, but if you want a hard copy chart, say, I'd like to stitch cam a lot. And then the next one is Guardian Angel by Lavender and Lace. Now, I do not have the original envelope to this. The original packaging. Um, I think for Lavender and Lace, it only comes in plastic anyways. With a little cardboard top. So you get the you get the picture, original picture, the original chart, um, which just like Camelot is a really big piece of paper. I did highlight on this, however, it's in yellow. On yellow paper. So you can still read all the symbols, and if you use a black and white copier, you won't even see the highlights. Um, so big sheet of paper. Everything is still legible. None of the symbols have disappeared into the paper, paper folds. Um, just a few highlighting before I made a working copy on several sheets of paper. So, um, if you'd like to stitch Guardian Angel, again, no one say giveaway or prize or anything in the comments. I'd like to stitch the angel. There are no beads on this. There is metallic. I substituted with Petite Treasure Braid. Guardian Angel by Lavender and Lace. I'd like to stick, stitch the angel. And then for the people who like smalls, I have Chicks by Lizzie Kate. This is just the chart. Cute little Easter chart. Um, the chart hasn't been marked on at all. So I'd like to stitch the Chicks if you like the Chicks. All right, so there's your giveaway. Uh, I will draw a name on two weeks. So my video two weeks from now. I'll write that down. Two weeks. Okay. Still doing more stitchy stuff. I don't know if I'm going to have time for a deployment story this time, but more stitchy stuff. I have shown before my um, stitchy planner well I have it all set up for 2020 so this is my Chic Sparrow Traveler's Notebook uh, the leather is uh, Black Beauty it's a personal size classic so it doesn't have pockets um, I showed you what I was doing for 2019 I have changed it a little bit for 2020 and I know I have more new subscribers so I thought I would show you what I have set up for 2020 I've got two, two main inserts for 2020, but also part of another. So, 2020 stitching. Um, these inserts are from Yellow Paper House. I will, they're at a store, uh, shop on Etsy. I will link that below. I've got my whip list page. I only have nine written there so far because uh, I'm making sure I'm not, I'm, not tempting the wrath from high atop the thing for whoever gets that reference. Um, and I have to finish Hogwarts Travel Poster before I can keep writing more whips to have them written uh, chronologically. So, 
2020 whips, 2020 finishes, page finishes, goals. I'm still playing around with my goals, what I want to uh, finish, and how many pages on each of my full coverage pieces. Get this thing will focus. Um, so I will write those in as, as it gets closer to 2020. And then I have my one page per month where I'm going to abbreviate my whips this way that I actually work on and check off uh, what I actually work on each day in a month. And that information I uh, transfer to my Excel sheet that keeps track of how many days on each whip, the last day worked, the start date. Let's see. And then something that, because of Magical Stitches, something that I did this year that wasn't in my uh, notebook is that, of course, I was counting stitches all the time. This is the first year I've actually counted stitches on everything. However, it was just on scratch piece of paper. I was only doing it so I knew when to post pictures, um, when the next picture was due for like an extreme challenge or extra credit or the outrageous challenge. And it's all on scratch paper that's completely messy. And once the paper's, you know, filled up, I throw it away. Well, I had room in this insert and I decided that I would have one page per whip, especially for my full coverage where this isn't going to be where I write daily how many stitches I do. This is going to be like per rotation. So it's going to be like one number per month. Um, so I'll still use my scratch paper to, you know, jot things down. And then when I'm done working on that piece for the month, I'll put it in my notebook so I can keep track throughout the year how many, not only will I know how many days I worked on a piece, but how many stitches I put into the piece. Um, some people don't want to be that specific and that's totally fine. I'm a nerd. So I have a page per full coverage whip. I have a page for big red shit. Um, some of my other big pieces, Four Seasons, which is Modern Folk Embroidery, Templar Prophecy, Witchy Tea Time, um, which is Primitive Hair, uh, Santa Sampler by Cooler Designs, and then I have some pages um, saved for the National Parks in Full Coverage Fanatics. Instead of by the numbers, we're doing National Parks. Um, we're going to visit up to 25 parks. I've talked about this before. Each park is 4,000 regular stitches or 8,000 tent stitches. And I went on Etsy and I found an artist that creates stickers and posters of his art for the national parks. I did uh, share this in the Full Coverage Fanatics group, um, but this is a set of, let's see, 61 national parks plus five bonus emblem stickers. They're indoor outdoor vinyl. They're really high quality stickers and they're like an inch and a half or two inches. Um, I can fit up to six stitch, six stickers on a personal size page in my notebook. So once, and I'm going to, I'm going to use those last few pages as like a passport. So once I accomplish the stitches for a park, I'm going to put the sticker in there. So it's like a reward. I get to look at one of these cool stickers. Now, of course, there's 66, 61 national parks, and we're only going to 25. So I don't know what I'm going to use the other ones for yet. If I'm going to save them and, you know, use it as a personal goal for next year or what. But, of course, I'll only be using the, the 25 that we're going to in full coverage fanatics first. And we'll see what I do after that. I will link um, the listing for these down below as well if you are interested. And then the second insert I have um, this year, I just have a, a like a scratch notebook that I keep next to my stitchy spot where I write things down. Um, prefix notes, uh, floss tube notes. I write down like the extra credit task for for the, the year in Magical Stitches and then different whips I could use for each task. Just, it's a, it's a brain dump for stitchy stuff. Um, and I keep that next to me. Well, you know, I have a little blip for notes for every video and I have actually gone back and referenced those before. So I thought, why don't I just keep my notes instead of tossing the page when I'm done with it? So I like 
I can't refer back to that page anymore because I tossed it. I have another insert for that. Um, and this was from Yellow Paper House, one of their grab bags. So it's not an insert I normally use in my regular planning. I don't keep a daily page. Um, so it's not the best layout for video notes. But I can write down whips and other notes for, you know, stitches or how many days or what I was working on it for. Um, instead of the, you know, I can put the video number, the date, plans, whatever. So I'm using what I have. I like, I enjoy using things up that I have. So I'm going to use this insert, which is a daily. Let's see, there's probably 31, 31 pages. And I know there's going to, you know, doing weekly videos, if I still do that next year, I'll more than use up this insert. But I've got other scratch inserts that I can use. And then, of course, I still have, I'm still working in this other insert that's one page per month just for plans. Where I can jot down which events I want to um, participate in. And then I check mark once I actually work on it. Just the way my mind works. So I plan the month and then I have another spot to actually mark what I actually work on. Anyways, that's my nerdiness. Um, didn't have time for a story, but we'll do a story next week, maybe. Everyone, I hope you have a good Thanksgiving, whether you're with family. Um, I'd like to thank all first responders, military, everyone else who has to work this Thanksgiving weekend, retail workers. With Black Friday, I don't plan on going out. Again, we're expecting a winter storm. Um, and I don't do Christmas shopping with my girls in tow. That's just madness. Uh, so. Oh, and we're going to... Let's see. My older daughter's best friend lives three doors down. So neighbors that we know, that we get along with, uh, they invited us over for, for dinner. So don't worry. I'm not cooking. I'm not cooking for me and the girls, and we have some place to enjoy our Thanksgiving with friends. So, everybody, have a good stitchy week, and happy Thanksgiving. Bye.